Mike and I met in Bible college doing puppets. We just, it really clicked right away. I mean, because we just, we started writing, you know, just these crazy puppet skits. And I, for some reason, decided to do The Princess and the Pea, do a retelling of The Princess and the Pea. But I switched it around and told the story from the perspective of the pea. It never made it uh, as, a, as a puppet show. But as we finally got into making Veggie Tales, it was one of the, the first things we tried to sell the show with, was some little pictures that Mike and I drew of the princess and the pea told entirely, at the, now at this point, with vegetables. As we went into the first show, um, nobody had really done that with 3D before. Pixar was doing some very early work at the time, doing some shorts, um, but this was, you know, eight years before Toy Story. Well, 1993, we were, we were technically the first uh, American CG series. It hadn't been done, that, that trail had not been walked before, um, so, you know, we think we should be able to walk it, but nobody's walked it yet, you know, so we're going to have to be the pioneers to, to blaze that trail. It, it was a really crazy idea. Uh, there was very little money. It was this wonderful underdog situation, which I love the, the, the whole idea behind it. It's like, well, let's just try to pull this off. Ah! Who are you? I'm Bob. I'm a tomato, and I'm here to help you. You know, the title of the show, Where's God When I'm Scared, was highly appropriate at that point because I didn't have a clue what I was doing or how I was going to sell it how we were going to make money on it so we could make more or anything, but off we went. Um, we, had to, we had to produce the main songs, we had to produce the main characters, we had to come up with everything from scratch. Um, I start writing the first VeggieTales episode, and I think, okay, I think there should be a song here. Got out my guitar and, and just strummed these you know, three simple chords and sang, called my wife in, so come here at least, and she's a music major, so it was a little embarrassing. It was the first song he ever played for me, of the whole series. It was the first song I believe that was ever written. And it was so funny, we were in this little house in Chicago, and um, he's upstairs on the bed, Elisa, come here, come here. And I get up there, and he's, I, I think I've got the, this first song, and he had his guitar out, which I think was his guitar from junior high, so it's sort of three-quarters size, and I think a few of the strings were off. He said, God is bigger than the boogeyman, he's bigger than Godzilla or the monsters on TV, oh, and just sang that little song for her, and she just stared at me. And just thought, oh boy. Is this going to work? Yeah, it's a cute song, but... And we were going to a church where the, a, they had a great music director whose name was Kurt Heineke. And I was watching him one Sunday, you know, up on stage, and he had his syn uh, synthesizers and sequencers all out and was doing all this great stuff. And I thought, I'm going to go talk to that guy and see if he could make my little song sound like a big song. Uh, and sure enough, he was interested. He wanted to help out. So we started, you know, writing these little songs, and then Kurt would try to actually turn them into real songs. When we came up for the concept of the show, it needed a name. And um, yeah, I came up with the name VeggieTales. I don't think there's anything that genius about it. <laughs> it just made sense to me. We're telling tales with vegetables. It's VeggieTales. And it just sounds, you know, sounds like sounds like vegetables and you know so I don't know I just it had a nice ring to it and I thought okay yeah that's that's a really good name and um, and then and then we needed a theme song and um, uh, I, I yeah I remember actually sitting in the office space um, you know thinking up a theme song um, and I came up with if you like to talk to tomatoes if a squash could make you smile and then I got stuck on smile and I was like okay what rhymes with smile and I even borrowed uh, Phil's rhyming dictionary, and uh, you know, in that rhyming dictionary, it didn't even have aisle for it. And then, you know, the next day it dawned on me, aisle, yes, there's a rhyme for smile. <laughs> so, wrote the little intro to that. Yeah, and I wanted to have Larry play in tuba, um, and I didn't play the tuba, so um, obviously Bob got to sing it because you know Larry was busy playing, which Kurt actually did on a on an actual tuba. The VeggieTales theme song is very clear in my head because uh, the tuba that I played on that was probably the only live instrument we used in that first show, except for uh, Mike Sage playing some uh, acoustic guitar. So uh, I used to be a band director, and so I called one of my band directing friends and asked him if I could borrow a tuba from the band, and he said sure. So he lent me the tuba and. You know, I used to be a band director, so I can kind of fake my way through many different instruments, tuba being one of them. So I brought the tuba to our little storefront studio, and we didn't have a, a sound stage or a recording booth. We just had a, a back room with just all these tarps and sheets and blankets and uh, acoustic tile taped up and that sort of stuff to kind of make it soundproof. 
And I was in there playing my tuba like at, at midnight one night, and, and Phil and Lisa were just laughing in the other room because <laughs> uh, it wasn't the best at times. Uh, but I have to say that, you know, on the recording, when, when Larry plays the tuba, there were some mistakes in there that are intentional. I uh, could have played it better, uh, but we wanted to make it realistic, like Larry wasn't the good tuba player. It's time for And then uh, Lisa um, Vischer, um, I believe she did then the whole chorus, like the veggie tales, veggie tales. And actually, on the very first show, that's all it was. It was just a, it was just the chorus. There was no broccoli, celery, gotta be veggie tales. That didn't come and think until show two. Um, so it was just this, you know, chorus repeated over and over again until, you know, you'll, there's never ever 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 been a show like veggie tales. And I remember I actually protested about that because I thought that sounded a little. Um, presumptuous. <laughs> I thought, we can't have that in there. You know, that sounds like, you know, we're being too snooty about it. There's never, ever, ever, ever been a show like VeggieTales. And I remember Phil and Lisa, you know, just looking at me and just saying, well, there hasn't. <laughs> I thought, well, okay, <laughs> maybe we can put that in. So we did Where's God When I'm Scared, you know, in two sections. The first section was God is Bigger Than the Boogeyman, or Tales from the Crisper, depending on which, what people refer to it as. Uh, and we finished that, and then I realized, oh boy, you know, we need the other half. What's the other half going to be? And at this point, I think my wife and I had just seen Joseph, you know, in the Technicolor dream coat. So I thought, okay, I can do that. I'm going to write a musical based on a Bible story, just like Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well, I'd never done anything even remotely close to that. I woke up in the middle of the night with this little melody going through my head. You know, bum, 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 bum. Oh no, what are we going to do? The king likes Daniel more than me. So I got out my mini cassette recorder and I ran into the bathroom and shut the door. In the middle of the night, I woke up because he wasn't there, which does not happen. And I am thinking, where is he? And I look and I see a light coming from under the bathroom door. And I'm thinking, is he sick? What's going on? I better go check. And I went over and as I got closer, I'm hearing, I see this shadow as if he's sitting next to the door, which made me worried. Perhaps he was ill, and then I hear this song. I hear, I hear him going, I am King Darius. I've had a dream. So without further ado, silly songs with Addie. The Water Buffalo Song. Um, the Water Buffalo Song was the very first silly song and the only one that I wrote. There really was no master plan, you know, behind the idea of silly songs. You know, from show when we never thought, okay, well, in every show now, there's going to be a silly song. I just wanted to do something silly in the middle of the video, just that really weird, you know, and now for something completely different. And I was walking um, through the plaza of the Dirksen Federal Building in downtown Chicago. All of a sudden, into my head, Everybody this little song just buffalo. jumps. And I start singing, Everybody's got a water buffalo, yours is fast and mine is slow. And I thought, well, that, where did that come from, first of all? And that's kind of fun. That could be, you know, the first little goofy song that we put in as this break. Now, it was never my intention that every show would have a silly song, but rather that we'd just do silly things, you know, it little breaks. So the second video has the forgive -a which is actually a script that Mike and I performed as a puppet show back in Bible college. And so I did that. I thought, well, this is silly. We'll throw that one in. And immediately we got letters. Where's the silly song? From that point on, we thought, okay, well, you know, maybe this silly song concept, you know, is something we should actually use in every show. And, um, you know, so then you know, the hairbrush song came after that. And the rest was history. And so what we have learned applies to our lives today. And God has a lot to say in his book. I wanted to have a song that would play at the end when it was time to sum up what we had learned. You know, very similar to the end of any kid's show like Mr. Rogers or Captain Kangaroo when it's, you know, it's the time to say goodbye song. We were driving on the way to church and we came up with this melody, and it was just a melody. It was do 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 and we were harmonizing on it. It was like, this is really, this is great. He said, Lisa, you have to sing this song all through church and remember it so we can run home and we can play it out on the piano or we're going to lose it. But we had to go through a whole church service. And of course, in the church service, they're going to play songs which will knock whatever song you have in your head completely out. And I thought, okay. And we walked into church and the whole service, I'm just, and even, you know, the worship songs and I'm, -na 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 -na, <laughs> and I felt horrible. It was, I had to do it, I had to do it. And so we raced home and got, sat down at the piano and plunked it out and wrote the What Have We Learned song. Which has terrorized Bob ever since. As I was saying, where you we know that God's word is for everyone. And now that our song is done, we'll take a look. 
I don't remember why we decided it should be a cappella, you know, with no instrumentation at all. Uh, and it may have been inspired by, you know, Take Six at the time or Bobby McFerrin. And it came down to just Lisa and myself. I mean, Lisa sang the lead and I sang a harmony and then we're doing the doo 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 little background parts. And we just kind of layered it all together and listened to it. And it sounded pretty good, but it was really missing something. And I think we sent Phil into, booth, into the booth to maybe do a low bass part or something, just try to come up with anything. And he went in there, and of course, because it's in a cinder block cellar, there's no window, we can't see what's happening. And we start hearing this percussive sound that was that was making the whole song work. And so we open, what are you doing in there? And he's like, I'm playing my cheeks. That kind of stuff. And that's the percussion in the song, is me playing my cheeks. Hi, kids, and welcome to Veggie Tales. I'm Bob the Tomato. And I'm Larry the Cucumber. And we're here to answer your questions. Mike and my wife Lisa and I went into the post house and recorded the very first script, you know, in um, probably April or May of 1993. So we started making the first video. I had one computer, it was set up in my spare bedroom, and then I was attempting to literally animate the whole film. Phil did the math and realized that it was going to be impossible for him to finish it himself. And I got, if you know the story of the first one, Where's God When I'm Scared, Junior watched the scary monster on TV, runs up the stairs, goes into his room, and slams the door. I had gotten about that far, and I realized that it would be the end of me to attempt to do this by myself. He had met a guy, uh, his name is Chris Olson. He was telling me this uh, idea he had that he was working on uh, that was animated computer vegetables. It sounded very intriguing. I, you know, I, I like crazy ideas, and it, it was so crazy it just might work. Came home that night, and there was a message from Phil saying, hey, you want to come work for me full time starting tomorrow? So I, I decided to do that. Um, of course, starting the next day meant that I had to build out the entire first studio because I happened to know how to drywall. Um, Phil did a little more math and realized that even with the two of them, they weren't going to be able to finish the animation. And so um, then they hired Robert Ellis. My wife said, no, they can't work in our spare bedroom around the clock. Um, so we rented a storefront. This is on the north side of Chicago, Foster Avenue in Damon. And it was a teeny little 600 square foot room, basically, that was in between a Spanish grocery store and a comic book shop. And we set up our one computer and we put up blinds so that people couldn't see right behind the plate glass window that there was a $70,000 animation workstation. Uh, and then the three of us triple shifted you know, on this one computer around the clock uh, to try to get the show done on time. And we also, at this point, were trying to sell the videos ourselves. So we'd taken out ads in Christian magazines and had set up an 800 number in the office. So really, as you're working, you're getting calls every hour or every half hour from people who are interested and want to learn more about it and want to talk to us. So you're, you're typing away, you're using your mouse, you're animating the show as they're buying it, which, you know, it, it, it keeps you in touch with your audience. In our ads, we had promised Christmas delivery. Um, and uh, so we had to make Christmas delivery or we'd actually be guilty of mail fraud in addition to our business failing. Um, and we finished the video, I think the last three weekends, we attempted to work on it all weekend without 